Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. Disney has come under a lot of pressure by investors for investing a lot in building out their streaming services, Disney Plus, Hulu, and then ESPN Plus. That would be the bundle that the company has. It says that in the future, they're going to be combining those into one app experience. But the reality is that they're burning money in the process of building out that business. But I think there are three reasons for investors to be optimistic about the future of the streaming business at Disney specifically. That's what I want to get into today. My name is Travis William. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And I want to cover a few of the numbers and then talk about a few things that Bob Iger and the management team said on the last conference call that tells us a lot about where Disney is going. This is the most recent quarter earnings report. You can see that revenue from direct to consumer, which includes the streaming business, was up 12% to $5.5 billion, but operating loss was still $0.7 billion. So on a run rate basis, nearly $3 billion per year that Disney is, is burning, trying to build out this streaming business. Here you can see the paid subscriber numbers. These have really slowed down in their pace of growth. Domestic Disney Plus subscribers is actually down slightly for the quarter. International up slightly. Total down 2%. In similar story at ESPN Plus and Hulu. One of the things that Bob Iger talked about on the conference call was that Disney was going to stop focusing on customers that aren't paying much or we're not getting a lot of value out of them being subscribers. The clear target here is going to be Disney Hotstar. You can see that 59 cents is all Disney is generating from the quarter on a per month basis per subscriber. That compares to $7.14 in the U.S. ESPN Plus, $5.64, and then Hulu is a little bit different, a little bit higher at nearly $12. And for video on demand and live TV, you're talking over $90. So what are the levers that Disney can pull to increase revenue and reduce those losses, maybe even start turning a profit in the next year or so on the streaming business, which is what they have projected? The first thing they can do is raise prices. That's explicitly something that management has said they're going to continue to do because Price increases over the last three years since Disney Plus was increased have actually gone over pretty well. People are not canceling at a really rapid rate. So that's something that we will continue to see, whether that's at Disney or any of its competitors. The second thing that we're going to see more and more of is advertising. This is going to be an easy way for all of these companies to increase revenue without losing subscribers by charging more. They're just going to start inserting ads depending on your tier. And what all these companies have found out, starting with Netflix, but including Disney with Hulu, is that the people who are subscribing to advertising only tiers or tiers that have advertising are actually generating more revenue for those companies than the customers that don't have advertising and pay a little bit higher price per month. That's how much money advertising is making for these streaming services. So I think we're going to see more and more advertising. They have talked about bringing that to Disney Plus. Will not start in the U.S., but the U.S. will likely be coming later this year. And that could be a significant revenue boost. The final thing that I'm really interested to watch with Disney, especially as they move to a single app experience, is what do they do with ESPN? We know that they have started having conversations with sports leagues about what the future of streaming and sports looks like. After the bankruptcy of the Bally's regional sports networks, we know that the cable model of those regional sports is just not viable anymore. So what does the future of that look like? And does that allow these companies to renegotiate the rights and get some of the streaming rights for sports like the NBA, maybe even the NFL? I think that's going to be really interesting. And ESPN is likely going to be one of the leaders. So if we can have an app like the Disney Plus app that suddenly has access to sports like any NBA game, that is a really compelling offering for something like Disney. And I think could be an incremental revenue source, whether that's from increased subscriptions or from advertising like we talked about earlier. So the first two that we talked about are clear and they are coming. Prices are gonna go up and advertising is gonna to come to these streaming services. We know that I think that Disney can be profitable in the streaming business just by implementing those two things. But the real wild card for Disney is gonna be what happens with sports and does that stay part of the Disney bundle and does it increase revenue and margins as a result. I'm optimistic that that will be the case. And I think Disney has a better case with the ESPN brand, with ABC, and with the massive streaming network that they have than a lot of their competitors. I think they could build out not only a national, but an international sport subscription business on streaming and actually make it a win-win for sports leagues and for themselves.
So those are the three things that I'm watching. Those are three reasons that I am bullish on Disney and maybe more so than a lot of people. But what do you think? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.